Hey folks, getting ready to rig this Wilderness Systems Thresher 155. It's a 15 and a half foot long boat that was designed for covering big, big salt water. So very long boat. I'm excited uh, because I'm going to be using this boat to compete in the kayak saltwater series. So Chad Hoover with KBF has taken that concept and he's bringing it to uh, to saltwater. He's already done it with the redfish series, but he's going to grow it to other species. I've owned one of these before. It was the Thresher 140. I uh, used it a lot in the Chesapeake Bay in some really rough conditions. Uh, it's a great boat for really lumpy big water that uh that really tries to throw you out of there uh great for surf launches and this one i'm excited about because i think it's going to be the fastest one yet with the 1103 because of all that length so i've already done some of the install i've i've put the uh the sliding foot pegs and the track of the the stern motor foot control kit by wilderness systems uh that's already in there uh we had had uh I think inserts there and then that one we have the uh the lock nut on the back of that pretty easy to access it uh with this you know just reaching up inside that that central hatch um remove the stationary ones uh i was already plumbed for the the uh tubing but i had to move the where the tube exits which was here and here, had to go a little bit wider. I'm out there and there because when you put the, the bracket on there, you, know, you don't want it tucked up underneath where that's gonna be. Uh, but that's not the, the only problem I have with this install. The big problem of how we get the Ultralight 1103 on there, how are we mounting that bracket? There's no access to the inside of the hull. I mean, I can drill holes, but I need something on the inside. Um, you could, I guess, get a round hatch in here, but um, I'm not gonna go that route. I've actually been looking for a boat to do this with to show how you use, I'll, I'll show you what I've got. These are the anchors that used to be part of the the ball mount kit and I'm going to show you how we're going to get four anchors on this surface that correspond with these four holes and uh, you get this special tool you can actually order the anchors from Torquedo from the parts department and uh, and get that cool that tool and put them in real important when you when you put them in you need something to lubricate the threads. So I'm gonna jump in and start doing that and show you what that's about. So that um, it's really that, that there's a, a video out there that shows people here's how you put in anchors and uh, here's how you, you get them from Torquedo. Torquedo service department has this in, the, uh, in their parts. So right now the fastest boat that I've tested with this motor, the Ultralight 1103 AC, the three horsepower electric outboard, um, is the Wilderness Systems Attack 140. And I got 7.4 miles per hour out of that, um, out of that setup. That's a 14, a little over 14 foot long boat. This one's 15 and a half feet. Length of wetted, wetted surface is a big, um, Big contributor in how fast the boat goes. Also, a boat that's lightweight uh, really helps out a lot. So this boat actually weighs less than the Attack 140 and is longer, so we should really fly. But before we can get that in the water and test it, we gotta we gotta get this mount on there. We have no access to the inside of the hull. We're using these anchors, and to show you how these anchors really work, I got an old toilet paper roll. So. Basically, we'll drill a hole in, in the hull. This will slide down in there, underneath the hull, and then we'll have a screw that will go down and reach the threads, and they will pull the threads up that will kind of star out that. And that is gonna be what's on the inside of the boat that really keeps, you know, keeps the threads from pulling out and really secures this mount firmly to the deck. So 
First thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie and mark out exactly where I want these, uh, these four holes to be. I like this to be as flat as possible. That's really not completely possible because this entire surface is, is rounded. Um, I've thought about putting gaskets in and I may go find some rubber gaskets to do that. And just to make sure that this is really on there snug. We'll see. But these are my holes where I'm going to be drilling a hole big enough to get that entire, entire anchor down in there. And then I will lubricate the threads and then compress them upwards. So I got this rubber gasket. This will actually come into play a little bit later, but I'll go ahead and quarter it for now. And I'm using each quarter where each bolt is just to, just cause it's on a rounded surface and that just raises it up a little bit and I'll drill holes through it. And as I tighten down on it, this will actually sit on top of, it's, it's actually going to be this, this part without the bolt. Um, and the bolt will be going through the mount, but this part is going to sit on top just to give it an extra measure of, you know, just as a gasket to really cinch it down and, and have something that's a little bit, it's got a little bit of give and helps it secure itself on what is a curved surface here. There are other ways to handle these curved surfaces. Uh, you can, you can uh, build spacers with PVC cylinders that have holes in it. Uh, you can do, you can do stuff with uh, marine board and get creative. But this one overall is, is fairly flat, but it has a very, a very minor curvature and I'm just going to use these gaskets to to help out with that. So I'm going to start drilling out holes and it's got to be pretty big. It's to to fit that that insert in there. Uh, this one's a drill bit's a 29 60 fourths. So you got to make sure that it's big enough to really to fit that in there, to be able to, to tap it, to knock it down in there. Uh, I got a little pallet that I'm gonna use to, to knock it in there, but it's gonna chew a pretty big hole here. And uh, I know that's unnerving for a lot of folks, um, but ultimately that's what, uh, what silicone is for. So we will make sure that we have a a nice watertight seal and I really want to center on these marks. That's a scary big hole in the boat, but it's what you got to do. Get these in here. So, yep, that goes in and then I just sort of tap it to, to secure it. And then here comes the fun part. Uh, this is really the part where you need something. And I got some, some PB blaster here to, to really lubricate the threads. Uh, Cause they're gonna go down in there, I gotta find my special tool that I lay down on there first. There it is, all right. So you lay this on top of it. You screw this down. And this is where the work starts. You tighten this. I'm going to use the Phillips first. And you're, you're just mashing it upwards inside, which it's just starring out. 
and you probably get some blisters on your hands doing this but a little bit at a time I'm gonna switch back and forth between the uh, between the Phillips and the flat the flats actually doing pretty good the Phillips was starting to chew up the corners because maybe it wasn't big enough but all the tool does is it keeps the insert from spinning so I've tapped it where I need it to be and I just keep going so I can't go anymore and that's when I know it's done what I showed you with the, the toilet paper roll where it's starred out inside and it's really got a good lock and is not going to pull through that that big hole that we created so to do this without the lubrication of that the pb blaster or whatever you decide to use as as um lubricant for the threads it really binds it really gets difficult so that step is critical in these inserts doing what they need to do and yeah it'll go as far as it will and it'll stop and that's where you back it all the way out and then you remove the tool and then then you have your insert and you use you reuse the same bolt to put the bracket on there and we got to do that four times i believe i'm nearing the end but this is where the real work is done getting those last little eighth of a turn in is important because that's where on the inside it's digging in okay so that's there it's in and coming back out should be relatively easy but you don't I would not recommend you use power tools to do this reason is they'll go fast and they will chew up the head and round it out it's a phillips inside a flathead surface and they're pretty big and you stick a you know a driver in there and let it at high speed chew it up uh it's it, it will render it useless i'm chewing it up pretty good just with my hand but it's at least controlled i can i can keep it where it needs to be for the most part yeah it's it's never gonna just come by hand okay that's out and that is definitely in so i will take a little bit of silicone rub it around there and then we will <clears throat> use this to line it up and just check each time to to make sure that we're you know there are our holes that we made haven't drifted at all or at least the the marks we did we want to make sure that they're still good yep they're still lined up i think i'm happy with all of them i'll keep going drill out the other three put the other three anchors in and that's it
So you're just lining up these two little nubs here. Forget about these. This is going to be the upside. These two little nubs of the screws go right on either side of those little notches. And that is what keeps it from spinning. All right, I've finished putting in the, the inserts, uh, which the, I think the right name for them, they're actually called Molly Bolts. Um, and I've drilled out little holes in these, these little rubber pieces and I will put them on in between um, the bottom of the mount and these inserts. But before I do that, I gotta find my silicone tube. I wanna get a nice bead of silicone all the way around there. All right, there it is. And this, you know, it just keeps keeps water from getting in wherever you let it. You know, you give it a chance to get in. And it would certainly squirt in around these these inserts. I'm trying not to get it down in the main hole because I don't think that's going to be a main source of where it's coming in, but all around the edges. Clean up the excess. And I'll go ahead and put these on a, ahead of time. Just so I'm not messing with it later. It's not, not the cleanest look, to be honest. I, I think it would look better if it was you know, perfectly round ones, but I want it to be functional and I want it to to lay on there snug and tight. And it should do that. Well, I will say, if you totally botch this and you really don't have something where where it's aligned, there's nothing to say that you couldn't take your drill bit and grind the hole in the mount a little bit this way or that way or whatever you need it to be in order to, to work. Um, that's not against the rules. That is really secure, and I will tell you that I'm not going to go through the rest of the install. I think it's pretty much the same as a lot of the other videos that I've done. The unique part about this install is getting this bracket on a boat that has no access to the inside of the hull. All right, well that pretty much does it for installing the bracket on a boat that you can't really get inside, access to the inside of the hull. Um, how you can get the bracket on there, mounting bracket with the molly bolts. Uh, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna film the rest of the install. I think you've seen that in other videos. Uh, in particular, one that I think is really good um, in a step-by-step -step of all parts of the install uh, of this this motor is if you go to my YouTube channel the little stuff look at the Torquedo playlist and the the one I did with Bill Durberall on his Jackson kayak uh, big rig HDFD that one's very thorough but I'll finish rigging this one out with the spectra cords in the in the tubes and uh, the motor lift lines and everything else I need to do to complete this install and we'll get it on the water see how fast it goes All right, we're out here on Lake Marburg. Beautiful day, not a whole lot of wind. Got a nice lane here where I'm protected from what little bit of breeze there is, so should get some good accurate information. Um, 
see what it'll do. Let's mash it. A little bit of cavitation at first because I have that motor pretty high. I probably do want to lower it a little bit, but looks like we're going 7.4, 7.5. It's like seven and a half. Let me make sure I'm going in a nice straight trajectory. Yep. Now we're going to touch seven six. There, seven point six mile per hour. That is beautiful. And holding. Nice. Seven six. So that's a new record. I'll go ahead and get all the speed and range numbers and lay them out and see what kind of range you get with this thing at, uh, at different speeds. But 7.6 is, is getting it. about this rig is the maneuverability. Long boats are not supposed to be maneuverable like this, but with the foot control steering, it's doing really well. I'm pretty happy with uh, the responsiveness of the foot control steering is doing really good. So I've actually owned one of these before, um, and it wasn't the, the 15 and a half foot version, it was the 14 footer. And what this boat was designed for is really, I say saltwater use, but really big water use. And what that means is, yeah, you can surf launch with it, uh, you can handle a breaking wave coming at you and, and be able to, to punch through it, but my experience with it is I've had I've had it out in the Chesapeake Bay on days where it was really rough, really rough conditions. Um, and it's it's a narrower boat compared to a lot of fishing kayaks, but what it has is a tremendous amount of secondary stability. I think when most people talk about stability, they talk about primary stability. So boats that when you sit in, they feel like they're never going over. Um, Certainly boats like, um, you know, the, the native Titan is a great one. Amazing, like, you know, as they say you'd never flip one. I don't know if anyone has, but that has great primary stability. This boat having great secondary stability, it'll start to tip a little bit easier. It'll feel like it's going to go, but in, in a steep wave, if you're on it, those boats with great primary stability kind of match the surface of that wave and you would actually fall out. The boat wouldn't flip, but you would fall out of it. Whereas this boat, if a wave is steep like this, it wants to stay like that instead of like this. So that, it, it kind of slides down it. So it's uh, it's unique in that way. And that, that's why I chose it to set up for, for fishing the Kayak Saltwater series uh, is because you know, I, I do plan on getting out in some really rough, rough weather with uh, steep, what they say, lumpy water. So big waves and, and some breaking waves and, you know, being in a boat that has great secondary stability certainly is an advantage in, in that sort of situation. All right, getting ready to do a uh, little shake through cruise with this uh, Wilderness Systems Thresher 155 all rigged out. I've been been picking away at this for a little while, a couple, uh, couple of days now. 
Uh, I do have the, the Humminbird Helix 10 on there. Uh, I got some Yak Attack accessories for, for trolling. Um, I did something different with my video recording. This is a, uh, a Sony action cam and I have it wired up through. If you look in there, let me pull this out. Maybe you can, you can see it. I'm going to remove the pod. The pod I don't actually use for, for the duck finder. It's actually I've got my lunch in there. But I do have the transducer down in there mounted on a foam block. Uh, that way if I hit something it just pushes up in there, kind of absorbs a hit. Uh, but if you, if you look under, well, you can kind of see it there. Um, but my, uh, my camera here, uh, which is set up to be waterproof, I got to put some Yolotech uh, silicone stuff in there. I'll, I'll put that on a little bit later, but that, that just makes it so this power source and then the one for the wireless mic, which if you look, I got it right here, uh, and then a constant power supply in my pocket. So, I mean, it's all set up so that I don't have to worry about my handheld camera, which I'm filming with right now. Uh, I, I don't want to get that wet. So, it's uh, it's through the, the Yak Attack through-haul wiring kit, and it actually goes to the power source, which is this Dakota Lithium battery, which I have in the, in the foam block. Um, one of them's in there with, the, with this uh, USB connection. The other is through, and I have the, the Yak Power system set up here, um, which actually connects to a couple different things. Um, I do have, number one is my power supply for the camera, but if I push right there, that is my bow lights. That just keeps me visible. So these super bright LED lights on the, on the bow and then the stern um, just make it so that that I'm seen pretty readily uh, it's important you know because it's a gray kayak and it, it all kind of looks gray out there so visibility is, is important the other visibility that I have uh, is a is a Yak Attack Visi Carbon um, Visi Carbon Pro flag but I've upgraded the flag to this super bright one. Chuck Earls who uh, who fishes for walleye up in Lake Erie. I don't even know if that's gonna convey how bright this thing is. But it's it's like construction construction worker um, green. So I'll put that on here in a second. Uh, what else can I tell you? It's got the Ultralight 1103 on there, uh, which got this whole rig up to 7.6 mile per hour. Uh, I got the Innovative Sportsman flush mount, um, throttle mount there, and I got the foot control steering going. Um, it's got this little tray, which I'm gonna I'm gonna scoot this battery um, and and the little foam thing that it's it's in back there. Um, this is the kind of foam that I use to build that. It's good stuff. You can do all kinds of different things with that. Uh, but I'm going to lay my little tackle tray in there. It's got all my... probably going to be jigging with these. These are the uh, Z-Man scented jerk shads in glow with the, with the uh, striper eye one ounce jig head. We'll see. If I can find something on that unit where I got a bunch of them up deep, I'll probably jig on them. So, uh, what else can I tell you? I got my hat cushion on there. I uh, just kind of loop that through the, the back of the seat so it doesn't, doesn't scoot forward. That's about it. So, we'll get it out there. See if we can find some, uh, some uh, Chesapeake striped bass and uh, you know, see see what adjustments I need to make to this rig, but uh, I'm excited to get it out here doing what I uh, designed it, what I rigged it for, which is, you know, getting out some salt water, catching some striped bass.
There it is. <clears throat> That's one of them. It's not the bigger school, one of the bigger schools, but it's one of them. And I'm looking underneath here for, for some darker marks. Uh, just because I don't see them. There they are. There they are. Heck it. So we're going to back off a little bit. And uh, I'm going to put the camera down and uh, see if I can get, get some of those, those fish that are underneath it, usually off to the side a little bit. They're in the area, and sometimes they're plastered right on bottom, but, you know, that's it. Let's get them. <laughs> 